When was the last time I charged? Was it Sunday? Oh my God, I can't believe it. It's been a year. Hello YouTube, I'm Bill Hensley and welcome to my one year review of the 2017 all electric Nissan Leaf. So just a quick shout out here before we get started. I wanted to thank all of you who have been watching this channel over the past year. I really appreciate all the comments and everyone who has clicked on that subscribe button down below. You've all been a big inspiration and it's just one of the reasons why I've decided to keep on doing what I've been doing. I recently made an announcement in one of my prior videos that you can now follow me on some of the other social media sites as well. And the response to that has been extremely positive. Per some of the suggestions that I've received, I started up a Patreon account too, which I'll include in the description below. For those of you who don't know, Patreon is this cool place where you can sign up and donate to creators like me. I honestly wasn't expecting anything to come from it at first, but I've already had a few pledges from some members on there, and I wanted to give a special shout out to my first couple of supporters who are also donating through the Patreon site. For my first Patreon supporter, and the first one on the list, a big thank you goes out to Jim from Worcester, Massachusetts. Thank you so much, Jim, for your pledge and the pleasant conversations we've had going back and forth on the Patreon site. I would also like to thank Parker for his support. From one Mainer to another, here's hoping we can spread the word about EVs in our home state. And a special shout out to my friends up in Canada, Johnny H. from Prince Edward Island. Johnny, if we ever secure our passports, we'll come visit you and we'll bring the leaf. What an epic adventure that would be driving the electric car through the Canadian wilderness. So here I am, one year later and still going strong. As you can see, my 2017 Nissan Leaf has held up well over these past 12 months. Having been through every season up here in the state of Maine, the electric car has proven itself not only to me, but to my wife as well. We have no questions about its reliability, and with just over 10,000 miles and all 12 capacity bars still left on my 30 kilowatt hour battery pack, I'm happy to report that I haven't had any issues in regards to capacity loss either. Even Leaf Spy has reported that I'm still rocking a 100% state of health, which is surprising considering that a third of my charging sessions have been with the quick charging units. That's amazing and has more than exceeded my expectations for this vehicle. And speaking of expectations, I've been pleasantly surprised here with the Nissan Leaf. If it wasn't for the lack of any deals to be had when I was shopping for the Chevrolet Bolt EV, I wouldn't have ended up with the Leaf and I'd be missing out on how great of a car the Leaf actually is. And this is just an entry level Nissan Leaf. There are three different trim levels to choose from, ranging from an S, which is what this is, to an SV and an SL. Aside from all the fancier bells and whistles found on the top of the line models, I found this model to suit me quite well as it's allowed me to live out the dream of driving an all-electric vehicle. Although this is an entry-level model, it is tricked out with the two options that one can add to a Model S. One being the heated seats, which is great for living up here in Maine and winter driving, and the other is the quick charge package, which I believe shouldn't even be offered as an option anymore, as it should just come standard on all trim levels moving forward. I've found that I've really enjoyed using the quick charging network, as I pointed out earlier in this video, over a third of my charging sessions have been hooked up to any one of the DC fast chargers that I've come across. It really enhances the driving experience, and I don't feel limited because I'm driving around in a 100% all-electric car. I can tell you, since I took ownership of this vehicle, I've gone more places than I would have if I were still driving around in my gas guzzling car. In fact, I felt more freedom just to pick up the keys and go because it's much cheaper to run and maintain than any prior vehicle that I've owned in the past. And that's another thing I love about this car, is the keys and how easy it is to start the vehicle. Gone are the days of sticking a key into the ignition and cranking it. I simply just get in, push the power button, and it turns on. There's no holding a key for two or three seconds. On cold mornings, there's no skipping a beat or wondering if the engine's going to turn over. More and more cold, you just get in, push the button real quick, and it's on. Within seconds, you put the car in drive and you're on your way. The shifter is really nice too, but I have to admit, coming from a gas vehicle, it took some getting used to. But now I wouldn't have it any other way. 
In a gas vehicle, as everyone is familiar with, when you put your car into gear, because it's mechanical, the position of the shifter stays in whichever gear you have it set to. In an electric car, it's different, because in an EV, everything is digital, and you almost don't even need a shifter, at least in the traditional sense. However, to keep things somewhat familiar, the shifter is still located where you would expect one to be, but the operation is somewhat different and unique to the electric car experience. You still have your drive, reverse, neutral, and park, but once you've told your car what to do, the shifter always returns to the center, awaiting your next command. Because there are no mechanics involved and everything is digital, the shifter could really be placed anywhere, whether it be along the radio, in the headliner, or on the steering wheel. One thing I wish I did have that comes standard on the higher trim levels is the built-in navigation system. But I found having an external GPS isn't that big of a deal for me. In fact, what I might end up doing in the future would be to replace the radio with an aftermarket unit that has Apple CarPlay or Android Auto built into it. The newer Leafs, 2018 and beyond, have this built into them, at least in the SV and SL models. The only other benefit to having the navigation system built in, I believe, is the ability to remotely check in on your vehicle so you can monitor its charge status, lock or unlock the doors, and start the car to get the climate control going before entering the vehicle. There's also plenty of space in the Nissan LEAF. The seats are comfortable and it feels roomy on the inside too. It's a great family car and there's more than enough storage for running errands to the grocery store and back and for day-to-day -day activities. If I had one complaint about the Nissan LEAF, it would be with the headlights, at least with the entry-level model that I have. Surprisingly enough, even though they used traditional headlights on the entry-level model, it doesn't seem to have an impact on range as one might expect. The reason why I'm not a fan of the headlights is because they don't come off as bright as I would like them to, at least when traveling on unlit back roads and the moon isn't out. Thankfully, that hasn't been much of a problem for me, as most of my driving is during the day. And when I do drive at night, it's mainly in the city with well-lit roads all around. I actually had to go out of my way to try and find an unlit road to get some footage here specifically for this video. I may consider replacing the stock lamps at some point, but it's rarely ever an issue for me that I may just wait until one burns out before I decide to replace both of them with something better. And that's pretty much it. I look forward to doing a two-year review and or 20,000 mile battery update whichever comes first, once I reach that milestone. I'll still have plenty of videos between now and then, so if you don't want to miss out on anything, be sure to click on the subscribe button below and the bell notification icon, and you'll be notified as soon as I upload a new video. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share with your friends. If you'd like to support this channel and the things that I do, why don't you head over to patreon.com where you can make a donation to this channel, and if you make a $5 donation or more, I'll mention you in one of my upcoming videos. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, keep charging into the future. There we go. I made it. Still had 13 miles I could have driven. <laughs> this is the farthest I've ever pushed it before. I drove 105.9 miles, so 106 miles. Uh, EPA rating is 107, so one mile below the EPA, but I could still do 13 more miles. And that's just amazing. <laughs> I've been using the air conditioner on and off all throughout the week, and that's the thing. The last time I charged was, when was the last time I charged? Was it Sunday? No, it was the 4th. It was the 4th of July. And I've used this car on Thursday and Friday, and here it is Saturday. Um, and that's what I've racked up in miles in, in three days. 105.9 uh, miles. 13 more I could have gone. Uh, Leaf Spy, however, uh, reports that I have 16% left in the uh, battery pack. Uh, so, like, you know, the dash here says I have 10%. I really have... Uh, 16 percent and it, I think it said 2.8 kilowatts left so <laughs> that's awesome that is a new achievement I still never I have not triggered uh, turtle mode which is uh, 
just slightly disappointing because I still haven't been able to see turtle mode, but you know what? I don't need to push the pack that hard. That That's all right, you know? Just the fact that it's blinking right now, telling me that I have 13 miles left and the uh, electrical plug icon lit up, that's good enough for me. <laughs> Let's uh, plug into this DC fast charger here and get my charge on. 